Qualifying for the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka is over and Max Verstappen absolutely dominated the field, taking one of the most dominating pole positions of the year and firmly putting the Singapore weekend behind him. But what else happened? Well, I am going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from qualifying at Suzuka. Now let's get to the video. As usual, I'll be talking about McLaren, Aston Martin, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. Qualifying at Suzuka saw only a small amount of circuit evolution when compared to what we've seen at other circuits, which you would expect, as the conditions were stable throughout the session, and a reason for this is that the Suzuka circuit is one of the more commonly used circuits in the world, and because of this, times only improved by about one second from the start of Q1 to the end of Q3, which you can see when taking a look at the lap times of Max Verstappen, which is shown here. Let's now compare the two laps from the start of Q1 to the end of Q3, and what differences can you see? Going through turn 1 and turn 2, you can see that Verstappen is able to carry a lot more speed, as he has more confidence in the car at the end of Q3. And going through the S-curves, Verstappen is able to monster the car around the corners, carrying a lot of speed, more so than what anyone else was able to do at any point. Similarly, through Dunlop as well, Rather interestingly though, Verstappen actually lost time in Q3 versus Q1 at certain sections. On the exit of Spoon, Verstappen doesn't get as good of a run in Q3, and also on the exit of the Casio Triangle Chicane at the end of the lap, you can see Verstappen actually gets a better run in Q1 versus Q3. Even though this was not the cleanest Q3 lap Verstappen could have done, it was still enough for pole position by over half a second. But the scary thing is, it could have been three quarters of a second had he done in Q1 what he did in Q3 at the end of the lap. With that in mind now though, let's take a look at the midfield and see what teams and drivers looked good in qualifying and what teams and drivers were struggling. Well, one team that is struggling a lot, sadly, is Alpine as Pierre Gasly is in 12th place and Esteban Ocon is all the way down in 14th place. And for Alpine, that really feels like the best they can do at the moment. Earlier in the year, they were fighting McLaren for 5th in the Constructors' Championship, but now they feel like they are in a completely different formula when talking about how fast they are. And speaking of McLaren, let's now look at the Q2 time of Lando Norris, who was 9th in that session, and Gasly, who is lining up in P12, to see where Gasly lost out against the McLaren driver. This is actually very interesting when you look at these two laps, because you can see some interesting things. Alpine was a lot faster in a straight line when compared to McLaren and also towards the end of the lap you can see that Norris's top speed starts to dip and why is this? Well one reason is because of what is called clipping meaning that Norris was probably out of ERS at this point. The same thing did happen to Gasly as well but not as prominent as it was with Norris. Through the first part of the lap in the S section, you can see Gasly is actually faster than Lando Norris at this section, but through the second part and on the run into Dunlop, Norris is able to carry more speed, as the McLaren is probably more stable than the Alpine is, leading to be able to carry more speed. Norris is also able to go faster through Spoon as well, down to having better downforce in the McLaren car, and for Alpine, they have been outdeveloped all year long. And really, they are now looking to 2024 to try and find a way to bounce back because right now, they are just falling further and further back from the top five. Alpine may have been struggling this weekend, but one team that has had a great weekend so far is the Alpha Tauri team, as their recovery in the second half of the season has been brilliant from where they started. Yuki Tsunoda made his way into Q3, and Liam Lawson is lining up in 11th place, which for him is a great place to be. He just missed out on Q3, but that is because he used too many tyres in Q1, meaning he was limited in Q2. For Tsunoda though, he is lining up in 9th place, but the question is, how did he manage P9? Well, let's take a look at the lap times of Tsunoda, who is 9th, and Fernando Alonso, who is starting the race all the way down in 10th place. Sonoda was actually faster in Q2 versus Q3, which means he probably did have a little bit more time in his pockets as well. Both AlphaTauri and Aston Martin have very similar speeds in a straight line, and this is actually a very back and forth lap. Through the S section, Sonoda is faster than Fernando, 
but on the exit of the Degnas and through the slower speed section, Alonso starts to become the faster driver, which is what you would expect from the Aston Martin, as they typically have good mechanical grip. But as the speed starts to pick up again, Sonoda starts to come back at Fernando and once again becomes a faster driver through Spoon Curve. For AlphaTauri, they're in a great position to score points with both drivers as AlphaTauri are looking to find a way to finish higher in the Constructors' Championship than right now where they are, which is dead last. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, I'd greatly appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams and let's start with McLaren. For McLaren, qualifying today was the best possible result as Oscar Piastri is second on the grid and Lando Norris is lining up in third place. But how did Oscar lose out on pole position? Well, let's take a look at the times of Verstappen to Piastri. Firstly, Verstappen is a little bit faster down the pit straight, which you would expect based on the rest of the season and definitely what has happened so far with Red Bull. But through the S section, you can see that Verstappen was in another league. No one could come close to Max through here. Also on the run into Dunlop, you can see that Piastri actually makes a mistake and has to come off the throttle, whereas Verstappen is able to keep going flat. Also through the Degna corners, Verstappen carries a lot more speed. Piastri is stronger on the exit of Spoon, but by that point the damage is done. Verstappen left the competition for dead. For McLaren, the goal tomorrow is to get at least one car on the podium, and right now they are in a good position for that. But they will have to be wary of tyre wear based on what has happened in previous races. For Aston Martin, their continued downward spiral is, well, still continuing, as Fernando Alonso is lining up in 10th place on the grid, and Lance Stroll once again finds himself being eliminated in Q1. For Fernando though, this was a disappointing result. The race pace of the Aston Martin is not too bad, but the qualifying pace is just not there at the moment. Let's take a look now at the fastest lap of Fernando Alonso to Max Verstappen. And, well, what you can see here is Verstappen just dominated everywhere. Rather surprisingly, Alonso actually loses time on the exit of the Casio Triangle chicane, which is usually where you would expect the Aston Martin to be strongest, given they usually have great mechanical grip on the exits of corners. For the race tomorrow, Alonso will be looking to try and score any points that he can. The Aston Martin is usually stronger in the race, and right now they need to score as many points as they can, because otherwise, they are in trouble of losing 4th place in the Constructors' Championship by the end of the season, especially with how McLaren are going at certain races. For Ferrari, they might be a little bit disappointed with their qualifying as Charles Leclerc is in 4th place on the grid, and Carlos Sainz is starting down in 6th place, and Sainz was 9 tenths of a second behind Max Verstappen on pole position. But how does Charles Leclerc compare to his teammate? Let's see how Sainz lost out 3 tenths to his teammate then. Rather impressively, Sainz is actually the faster driver at the beginning of the lap. He's able to carry more speed through the S's, but then he loses out on the run into Dunlop. And from the second half of the lap onwards, Charles Leclerc makes up more time. He gets a better exit from the tight hairpin, and also through Spoon he carries more speed, and by the end of the lap, Charles Leclerc is able to open up a 3 tenths gap over his teammate Carlos Sainz. In the race tomorrow, it will be pretty interesting to see how Ferrari fare. They have been better on tyres recently, but can they keep it together for a race and score another podium? Time will tell, but I don't think we are going to see any of the red cars on the podium this weekend. For Mercedes, they are clearly the fourth fastest car in qualifying as Hamilton is lining up in 7th place and George Russell is in 8th place. Let's compare the two times to see where Russell just lost out against Hamilton. Early on there's not much to tell between the two drivers as they are fairly even through a lot of the fast sections which probably means they are getting the maximum out of their car at this point but from the exit of the tight hairpin onwards you can see Hamilton gets a better exit and carries that speed advantage all the way into Spoon, and then on the exit of the final chicane, Hamilton gets a much better run. 
For Mercedes in the race tomorrow, they will be looking to find a way to beat Ferrari and try to defend second place in the Constructors' Championship. They are typically stronger in the race, whereas Ferrari are usually a little bit weaker. So they will want to make sure that they can get both cars to beat at least one of the two Ferraris, and I do think that is very possible for them. And finally, for Red Bull and Max Verstappen, it is back to business as usual, as Verstappen absolutely smashes the competition today and left every other driver, including his teammate, for dead. Let's now compare the times of Verstappen to teammate Perez. As you would expect, it all comes down to commitment and Verstappen having a way to just carry more speed. You can see just how much faster he is through the S's and finally going into the final chicane, he is much later on the brakes. In the race tomorrow, Verstappen will definitely win, unless his car breaks down. He was half a second clear of anyone in qualifying, and Red Bull are usually even stronger in the race compared to qualifying, meaning that tomorrow, he will probably be looking to win by at least 30 seconds without a safety car, and probably a little bit more, let's be honest. So, with that in mind then, what is my final top 5 predictions for the Grand Prix? In P5, I think it'll be Oscar Piastri. P4 will be Charles Leclerc. P3 will be Sergio Perez. Lando Norris will finish in second place. And Max Verstappen will absolutely dominate the Grand Prix. But that is what I think. The question is though, what do you guys think? Down in the comments, let me know. And as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.